So, we will have a quick recall from last class. So, last class we were looking at the definition of welding process itself, what is welding and then we will move on to uh, the definition of arc, right. So, we looked at uh, a, a conductor and then if electron travels, for example, electron is charge carrier and it travels, it dissipate energy. No, if it travels through a defined uh, potential difference, then uh, the amount of energy is released, uh, it is Vi, voltage multiplied by the current, Vi, right. Suppose if you have uh, an uh, uh, interruption of flow of electrons, so if you have a conductor, if the, the conductor is placed between a, a medium, the passage of the energy carrier it is not possible unless you have discharge, right. So the medium, if it is air or if it is any gas, that gas has to have a, a discharge mechanism by which you generate more amount of uh, the energy carriers. So in this case, in this case you ionize the, the air or medium, the gas in between the, the conductors so that you, know, you create an energy carrier, this energy carrier transport from one, one, one end to other end based on the potential difference, okay. So we looked at uh, the discharge and uh, what are the uh, discharges that are occurring uh, as a function of voltage and current, right. So we looked at three types of discharges, the Townsend discharge or black discharge or dark discharge, right. So the, 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 the characteristic of Townsend discharge is it happens in very high voltage, right. So very high voltage and extremely tiny amperage, so, uh, micro amperes you may say that, right. So, so it happens in naturally suppose if because of the cosmic radiation or some photovoltaic effect from solar energy. So it can happen but it is very difficult to you know uh, uh, the uh, identify in a natural way. It, the Townsend discharge happens now also. So because of the radiation coming from the say for example glow discharge and Townsend discharge it is also happening surrounding this room. It can happen in atmosphere. It is always happening because it is very tiny discharge and if it is happening uh, no, for example if lightning strikes, if it passes in high energy then you may also some discharges, okay. So the Townsend discharge is characterized by high voltage, very high voltage and the, the graph I showed you. So it happens uh, close to say 2000 to 3000 volts, is not it? This is the graph you looked at it, right? So this is the current and this is the voltage and Townsend discharge happens in close to the voltages of 2000, several thousand volts, okay? So then we looked at the, the second type of discharge is a glow discharge and which happens uh, in hundreds of volts, okay? And uh, the amperage is milliampers. So glow discharge we commonly use it for light bulbs, right. So where you have a sustained uh, discharge is happening over a potential difference but the difference is the, uh, the voltage is reduced compared to Townsend discharge to several hundreds, right. And then we looked at the third one which is very interesting for us uh, is the arc discharge. So arc discharge happens in extremely small voltages, tens of volts. Right, so so tens of volts it happens, whereas the amperage, the 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 electrons, the density is very high compared to the other two discharges. So it will be hundreds of amperage. The, the amperes will be hundreds compared to the other discharges. We have a very high current when you have an arc. Right, but voltage is extremely small. So that is the one of the major advantages of using arc. We can, you can handle the arc because of the very low voltage. Okay, so the welding process when you are doing welding, the potential difference between the, circ the, the circuit is uh, hardly 10 to 12 volts if you are in GTRW, not more than uh, any case, not more than 30 volts, okay. So if you look at only this part, the low part, so if you plot uh, the voltage versus current, so it can go to say for example, yeah. Um, so 20 amperes until 300 amperes. So initially, so this will be not more than 30 volts, this 0 volt, okay. So initially there is a small drop and then the curve will look like this. So if you go up to 300 amperes, 
the voltage. So, suppose if you are varying from uh, uh, the voltages, the ampere age from say 100 to 300 and you would see a steady state, the, you, you would not notice much increasing voltage. So, this will be not more than say 10 volts or so. So, that sustained discharge, it is very important. So, you should not increase, what is volt again? The definition, the volt comes from, so how do we define volt? Okay, what is 1 volt? So, why do you have to have a flat region, plateau in this graph? What is volt when we define correct definition? Why do you need to have an, uh, an, an, a plateau in this region? That, that comes from the energy gain. If voltage increases means then, that means that what? When the electrons travel, they dissipate more energy, is not it? If voltage is increasing mean, what does it mean? So, when uh, the increase in the, when you increase the ampere age, if voltage increases dramatically, that means that the energy dissipated is very high, okay. So, energy gain in the system is extremely high. So, you, the, the discharge is not sustained, right. So, you cannot use that system for, you know, uh, for longer sustained time, right. So, that is why you need to have a plateau region. That is why you use the glow discharge. Whenever we have a plateau in this graph, that is good for us because even if you increase in the ampere rate slightly increase, the potential difference is not increasing. That means that energy gain is minimized, okay. That is why you have a plateau region. The potential difference is not increasing. That means that even if you increase the density, the electron density in the system, you will not increase the energy of the system, right. So, that is the advantage of having a sustained distribution. So, if you have a such a peak, even a small change in amperage, if a system gains a lot of energy, then what will happen? Then you cannot keep it, you cannot make it as in a sustained uh, discharge, is not it? So, that is what happens you now when the amperage is goes high is in the glow discharge beyond the critical limit, the energy of the system increases tremendously because the voltage is increasing very high, then you will have explosion of the bulb, is not it? So, in there the, the operation voltage defines by this plateau. So, if it goes beyond certain amperage, there is an explosion and this curve can change, the ranges can change based on the gas medium. Suppose if you use argon, there will be shift in, there will be a shift in the voltage and current characteristics, okay. So, if you use neon for example in the bulbs, there will be difference of voltages and currents. But the nature of the curve is the same, okay. So, the values may shift, right. So, because of this nature of these voltage current characteristics and we can make sustained discharge. Again, when we define the arc, what is arc? It is a sustained discharge of a gas which results in continuous movement of ions and electrons, yes, between a potential difference. Okay, the sustained discharge is due to the plateau what you see in these graphs. Yes, it is clear? Yes, that is what we saw the last class, right. We will continue with that. So, so we look at more the, the fundamentals of the arc and then what, how do we generate heat in the arc? Okay, of course, we have a sustained discharge. How does this discharge result in heat generation? Right, we always say that Vi is the energy, but how does V multiply by I becomes joule? What is happening inside? How does heat generate in the arc? That we need to understand, right? So, we look at one by one, we will build up from these fundamentals, we look at what is happening inside the arc, right? Suppose if you have an arc with an arc energy of V I and this heat, whatever the energy is generated it should be dissipated, is not it? So, how do you dissipate the heat or how do you transfer the heat from one place to other place? What are the ways you can transfer? Yes, so, so if you have an arc energy of V i, that must be equal to the, the heat transfer, is not it? Conduction, convection, plus radiation, 
Okay. So if you know the principles behind the conduction convection radiation of an arc, we can calculate how much energy is there inside, isn't it? Inside the arc. So if you understand how the heat is conducted from the arc or how the convection transfer the heat from the arc or how the radiation transfer the heat from the arc and if you know all these three, we can calculate how much of energy is there in Vi in the arc, right? But it is not that straightforward. We will see in the course of lecture how we can calculate how much energy is there inside the arc. The fundamentals are the same, discharge. Okay, so we generate electrons and ions and we carry the energy from one point to other point or one point to other point with the potential difference of V if you supply I, how much energy is generated and how this energy is transferred to wherever medium. Okay? And before that we need to look at the geometry of the system, right? Okay, so then we can define the boundary conditions, right? So we look at it. First, before going to that, I want to ask you other question. If you say arc, right? A R C. Why it's called arc? Someone called. That's it. Why do we call it arc? Arc of the electrons between two metals. Yeah. When you define it, you should use the definition, the word itself. I asked you, what is arc? Shape. Is it? What shape? Hmm? Part of the circle, that is arc, okay, very good. So where do you have a part of a circle here? Part of, part of the electrons between two metals. Why not be straight path? Why it is taking that shape? Okay, so your definition is almost there. So that shape of an arc is an arc. Okay. So suppose if you have two conductors, when the, the energy carriers transfer from one point, one, one point to other point over a potential difference, it makes a shape like arc shape, right? Why is it arc shape? Why not uh, a straight path or why not triangular path? So the shape of this guy is an arc shape, that is why we call it as an arc. But why this shape? Hmm? What is it? Emission will be what emission? Electrons emission. Electrons emissions. Will be in surface. See what happens uh, uh, when you strike an arc in positive terms of temperature? Negative. Positive and negative. In terms of temperature? Increase. What happened to the gas medium? Please. Ionases? Yeah, because of the, the temperature. What happens to temperature? Okay. Right? Temperature reduces. Yeah, exactly. So density decreases. For example, when you strike an arc, there is an enormous amount of heat generated. So then what will happen to the gas medium? Gas is heated up. Okay? If the gas is heated up, density decreases, obviously it will expand. Okay? So that means that the, the, the temperature will be distributed whereas you have high temperature at the middle and then elsewhere boundary conditions, say room temperature. So there is a huge density difference. So that would lead to the, the expansion of the gas, isn't it? So this expansion leading to the formation of the shape, arc shape. That is why we call it arc. Right? So why do the gas, for example, my temperature, low temperature, why, do the, why does the gas flow? Why does gas expand? Because of heating, right? And because of that, why, do it, why does it expand? So in this case, you have a shape of arc formed, right? You will have a high temperature at the middle and elsewhere you have a room temperature, for example. So there is a temperature gradient, isn't it? from the center of the arc to the elsewhere. And because of that, there is a density difference. We will also have a gradient in density, right? 
So, this expansion of the gases with respect to temperature which also causes the density difference, is not it? And that will lead to the expansion and because of the expansion we call it a shape arc, yes, it is clear, good. So, now we look at in detail, so how we can make an arc in a common welding process, okay. So, we can make an arc between two conductors if it is flat. In welding case, we do not have any two flat conductors, we have one flat plate, is not it and another electrode. So, now we do not have an uniform expansion, right? Like we will not have a complete barrel structure. So, the shape can be changed, okay. So, we look at in detail so how an arc is struck in a typical welding process, right? Okay, we will move on to that. So, this is clear this picture the sustenance, the sustained discharge, it happens in three regions and we classify the discharges based on the voltage current characteristics. Arc has a very low voltage, tens of voltage and very high current, okay. So, that makes it very attractive for the welding applications or cutting applications or whatever applications, okay, so because it is user friendly. We can sustain over long current, okay, very high current over the range of currents, right, it is clear. So, if you zoom in the, the bottom regions, so you have uh, the arc voltage as a function of current and there is a uh, uh, steady decrease when you have a very low current until say 20, 30 amperes, generally we avoid welding in that region. So, if you use an extremely low amperage, again this is, these are graphs are all plotted for argon, okay, the gas argon. If you change the gas, then this characteristic will also change, but in commonly it does not change much. So, if you change the argon to uh, helium it may change slightly different, we will come to that later, but you can assume that. So, at low amperage there is a gradient and that is not sustained. So, if you use a very low current obviously the voltage, the change in voltage can be very significant even if you change the very small current. But if you go beyond say 50 amperes, so until 250, the increasing voltage is very minimal. So, it will be 10 to 12, maximum 13, not more than that. So, that is the operating, operating voltages of most of the common welding processes, okay. So, if you increase the amperage to slightly higher, for example, 1000, you, you may increase to 25 volts, not more than that. So, if you are welding, most of the cases you will be welding the current ranges 100 to say 300 amperes, if you are using thin sheets for example, if you are GTAW, okay. So, it will be not more than uh, 300 amperes. So, you are in a steady state, so the, the voltage gain is not that much even if you change the amperage over wide range, yes, it is clear, good. So, the shape of an arc is defined by the expansion of the gases, okay, so the low density to the high density, okay, so you have an expansion, the gas expands. So, when the medium is actually discharged and it is keep on keeps on getting ionized and you generate more and more electrons, so obviously, so the, there will be collision between the electrons and ions, so then the energy dissipated, right. So, that energy it can be radiation or can also be heat that can also be any other emissions. So, we use heat, the collision between the electrons and ions, okay. So, it generates, it dissipates heats, right. So, that heat, we use it for our applications, right. Suppose if you have two conductors rods, then you will have the shape like a barrel shape. Suppose if you take this guy out, and you put a flat plate, right, what will happen then? You will have half, 
So, that is in, in, in real welding conditions, it becomes half, yes, yeah, it, it becomes half in a way, but the shape of a bell, okay. So, if you look at an, an, an welding arc, the shape of an arc is a bell shape, right, the shape is like this. So, we have one thin rod which is an electrode in this case, right and then you have a flat plate which is a work, work, work piece, right. So, it can be anything, any metal, any metallic object. So, instead of having two flat electrodes, if you replace the one of the flat electrodes, uh, rod electrodes into a flat electrode the arc formed will have a shape of a bell. 